Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your Angel and Spirit Guide message reading for you for money and career. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. So let's dive into this reading, but actually before we dive into this reading, I just want to say that this reading is coming from a place of love, light, and positivity to build you up and keep you moving forward towards your life purpose or in your life purpose and really keep you connected with your angels and your spirit guides because there is so much chaos in this world and so many ways that we can feel defeated and overwhelmed and as if we'll never move forward and so this is to combat that all right so now let's move forward and claim this reading so let's see what your fairy oracle cards have to say angel and spirit guide reading for aquarius money and career Angel and Spirit Guide reading for Aquarius, money and career. Angel and Spirit Guide reading for Aquarius, money and career. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So we have healing, which is beautiful. And we have compassion. So healing in compassion is moving you forward, but also a healing that brings a compassion to yourself, Aquarius, is moving you forward. And then we have your chakra cards, angel and spirit guide message for Aquarius, money and career. Angel and spirit guide message for Aquarius, money and career. Angel and spirit guide message for Aquarius, money and career. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. We have soul's healing. Healing is very strong for you at this time. And meditation. So this is the soul star chakra located six inches above your crown. And this is your crown chakra. And your crown is connecting with your heart in a very beautiful way. And so to bring together your heart and your mind is going to be astoundingly powerful for you. Why? Because I firmly believe that we are emotional beings. And as emotional beings, we need to know and understand our emotions instead of just kind of sweeping it under the rug and saying, oh, you know, I'm just being too sensitive or I can't care about that. So it's making sure that you care about yourself. Yeah. Angel and spirit guide message for Aquarius, money and career. Angel and spirit guide message for Aquarius, money and career. Angel and spirit guide message for Aquarius, money and career. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. All right. So at the heart of everything, we have the Four of Swords. You are so quick to help everybody else, Aquarius. And it is giving that same energy that you give to others, that healing, beautiful force that you are, to yourself during this time. And it's taking a step back. It's healing. You're crowned with the Six of Cups. Then we have the Three of Wands, the Hanged Man, the Death card, which is a Scorpio energy, a time frame of October 23rd to November 21st. The Emperor, which is an Aries energy, March 21st to April 19th. Seven of Wands. The Tower. The Eight of Cups. And the Three of Swords. This is intense. I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, it's all roses and butterflies. This is an intense time for you. And it is one where you're really looking at things and at times you're going to be brutally honest with yourself. And you will have a tendency during this time, Aquarius, to speak to yourself in a way that you would never speak to others. So just be mindful of that with you because you're healing and you're walking away from something you once thought you would love. You're reclaiming your power, your truth, your understanding. And it's kind of like you are, it's not kind of like you are shifting all right? And you're seeing that your greatest strength lies in the fact that you're not like everybody else. And you actually, for a really long time, have thought that this is one of your greatest weaknesses. And, and it's just not. It's just that you're different. You were born to be different, Aquarius. And this is something that is beautiful about you. Because as you, as you see this, as you understand this, the pains that you have inherited from your DNA line, from past life, but also from just simply this life that can be inherited through, you know, your childhood. You're seeing yourself change. You're seeing yourself 
move forward in a greater power towards a greater truth of purpose. And the doors are really starting to open up to you when it comes to your career, when it comes to what you desire. And there's going to be this instinct of feeling like I have to fight for this. I have to stand my ground, know my truth, and nothing can get past me. But there is going to be a, a greater, a greater like abundance in stand your ground, yes, but don't fight every battle because you're going to see that that's just simply exhausting. And it's actually going to be bringing up a lot of old hurts that keep you from moving forward the way that you want to. So here we have healing. And this says, a healthy body thrives with a constant flow of balanced energy. And that's going to be astoundingly important for you during this time, especially since healing is so pronounced within your life. It's just a sense of balanced energy coming in. And where does this balanced energy come from? It comes from compassion. So here... It says, by widening your circle of compassion for all nature's creatures, your spirit will soar. Yes, that's true. But also it is looking at the world and it's seeing the compassion that you have for so much of the earth, Aquarius. And it's having that same compassion for yourself because you are, again, the type of sign you give instantaneously. Absolutely. You'll be like, oh, okay, I'm here. And you'll be taken advantage of. So making sure you have that compassion for yourself that you have from other people and it, that you have for other people. And it leads you to a soul's healing. It leads you to a connection with the tied to divinity that, you know, really graces you, that really moves you forward. And that has this beautiful light shining around you. And this is where you embrace your crown chakra. You embrace a meditation, a connection with your heart, a, a power of your soul. And there are going to be times where either you need to meditate, you need to kind of step back, meditate, relax, connect, or you need to have those quiet moments. And it doesn't have to be the act of meditating, but those quiet moments where you connect with your heart, where you listen to your emotional truth, because that's going to be what lets you heal. Because there's something that has been holding you back. Because we have here, I know I'm jumping, but there's a beautiful connection between the Three of Swords and the Four of Swords. And I know the Three of Swords is at your root, and we have the Four of Swords at your heart. But here, there's that sense of a progression, Yes, but the Three of Swords is going to be something that you constantly battle during this time. Doubts, fears, worries, craziness, you know, anxiety. And you need to heal from that or else your mind is going to go kind of like a hamster in a hamster wheel. It's going to go a mile a minute and get you absolutely nowhere. This is also triggering, all right? Something is triggering a, a fear that you have had from before that is making you question the way that you can move forward and the place that you want to be. So with the four of swords, it's like step back, take time out, connect with your emotional truth and the power of yourself, but also give yourself credit where credit is due. You've been through a war. You're not going to, you know, there's something here where it's like you don't want to admit that or you don't see that. You're like, oh no, this is just life. It's like, yes, but life is a battlefield. You know, life is hard. It rips us apart. It tears us down. And so here with the Four of Swords, you are claiming power. You are claiming beauty because you are resting and you are moving forward towards what you truly need within your life. There's going to be a sense of coming out of a winter. And as you come out of a winter, you claim your power and you heal. And as you're healing, and as you claim this power, you're walking away from something you once thought you would love. Now, it can be that you're healing, for some of you Aquarius says, after a job loss, okay? Or after, you know, a loss. It doesn't have to be a job loss, but it can just simply be a loss, a walking away. Now, this could be by you. This could be, you know, you chose to walk away. A job loss would be more that they, they fired you or you got furloughed. But here, with the, the Eight of Cups, you're walking away from something you once thought you would love. For others, it's looking at things and saying, I thought you would have my back, and you don't. And that's a betrayal you cannot abide by. All right. So there is a sense of walking away from something you once thought that you would love. It is a mindset. It can be a mindset. It could be you know, a job that you thought, oh, this was perfect for me, and you're realizing it's just not anymore. You are claiming back power, truth, and prosperity for yourself. And as you do so, there is an ending. There is a closing of a door. Or this is a moving away from the pain that you have been feeling for so long because of an ending, because of a traumatic ending that shifted your whole way of seeing things. And as you do so, we have you crowned with the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups is childhood. The Six of Cups is, is a connection with the past. 
And there's something here that is saying it's time to move forward from that. Now, it can be that you've carried with you a fear of either going back to the way that you were raised, you know, kind of that fear with money or that tyrant who reigned over your home or, you know, the sense of having to count all the petties or, you know, shop in a thrift shop or something like that where you're like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. And you didn't do it for fun. You did it because you had to, you know, you had to, things were tight. And so it can be that that you're moving away from, you know, that you're saying no more, my, my mind is changing, but it can also be somebody who told you you'd never amount to anything. And it doesn't have to be for those of you who are sitting there and saying, Dane, my childhood, A++. I mean, awesome, 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 awesome. Then this means that you're changing things up. Something here is shifting, okay, from the way that you had envisioned it to the way that it is going to be now, all right? So the tower is kind of like, ready or not, here it comes. And you might not be ready for this shift, for this change. It's coming for you anyway. And it's like, embrace this, because if you don't embrace it, if you don't move forward in this power, if you don't look at your bounty and at your beauty of, of self and of understanding, you are going to find that, that it comes anyway, but it hits you like a Mack truck. All right. So here with the tower, as you move forward, right, as you, as you see things in a new light, in a new way, you are going to find that the chaos of the past starts becoming just that. It becomes a story that you can tell, not a story that defines every waking moment of your life. And it's kind of like you're done. You're done with a certain tale. You're closing that narrative. You're closing that book. And you're saying it's time to write a new one. It's time to start a new story. And this is with your career, with your finances, with your prosperity. It's I'm claiming a new path. And it doesn't mean that you have to change everything up. You can stay at the same exact job. You know, you can be doing the same thing you've been doing for like, you know, 400 million years. But you've changed you. And there's this shift. There's this paradoxical shift that almost opens up a new reality. No, not almost. It opens up a new reality. And as it opens up a new reality, you see the dying away of the old self, a rebirth of the new. You, you see this death. And as you embrace this ending, and it's a profound ending. You look at the sorrows that you've been carrying around. The things that say, I can only achieve so much. Because I have a noose around my neck and I never knew it. I have a sword in my back that I was born with. Because so often, you know, there are little things. They can be things that your parents said that you didn't think would leave a scar. They, they just might have had a really bad day and come home from work and were tired and overwhelmed. And they said, oh, you know, Stop your dreaming, you know, and be serious. And what if dreaming was your path? You know, it's, it's little things sometimes that we don't realize the weight of our words. We're tired, we're overwhelmed. And, and life sweeps us up. And we forget how fragile the world is around us. How fragile the people are around us. I mean, if we can flood our oceans with plastic and pollution and not think a thing of it. And that is so terribly important for keeping us alive. Just think of the way we poison those around us. And so here, it's like enough is enough. It's a breaking of a cycle. It's a moving away from a story that wasn't yours to begin with. It's something you inherited. You know, that sense of lack. It's really funny. Because with parents, you inherit their, their drive, their determination. But you also inherit their fears. You do, they teach you how to be. And you might have somebody who taught you how never to be again. You know, kind of like, this is the person I do not want to be when I grow up. And I know I'm connecting that here, but it's something, it's something big. It's something big here that you are releasing, that you are saying, this isn't me anymore. And it can be a poison, I mean, I say parents, but it can be a poisoning of relationships. It can be this person that you were madly in love with. And they told you again and again, worthless. You know, never going to make anything of yourself. Because they had such inadequacies within them that the only way that they could deal with it was to be a brute and a bully. And you're moving away from that. You're moving away and you're saying, I'm an emperor. It's not even I am a king, all right? It's that I am an emperor. 
And I can either live in the tyranny of fear, right? the tyranny of other people's narratives for me, or the beauty of my own soul. I can either be a benevolent ruler of my life or a tyrannical one. And I would choose, seriously, here, Aquarius, choose benevolence. This is your life. This is your story. Embrace grace. This is power. This is dedication. This is dignity. Right? The emperor for me is like David in the Old Testament. He is strong and powerful and mighty and absolutely flawed. And he doesn't say, oh, no, those flaws never existed. He doesn't edit them out of his story, though he could very easily. He looks at those flaws and says, I will improve. And I will repent and I will keep on moving forward. And that's what our story is about. So the emperor is so important. It's also a father figure, okay? The emperor represents the, you know, represents the father, the arch archetypical, archetype of the father, right? In kind of like the young narrative of young psychology. So here you are, you are seeing your force, your power, and you are seeing that you are different than everybody else. You are not the same. And quite frankly, Aquarius, you do not want to be the same. It's like what's done is done for, for the world, but I have my life. And I am changing the way that I see it. I am changing the way that I define it. I am embracing me. And as you embrace this change, you see the hurt and you walk into a new life. You see the hurt and pain that's holding you back and you walk into a new life so you can be this emperor of your existence. So you can be this king, this power, this, this beauty, this passion, this determination, this force. Because with your heart and with your you know, success, Aquarius, you are unstoppable. You're represented by the stars in the major arcana. The stars in the major arcana show our greatest truths, right? So the stars are our highest form of perfection. You are the highest form of perfection, which super jealous about, by the way, because that is so cool. But you have to realize it. Like that's the hitch. You have to see it. You have to realize it for yourself because with the greatest potential comes the, the greatest challenge. And that's what the seven of wands, it's like, do not sit there and always say, oh, well, I have to defend myself against everybody. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a fight or everybody has to see this. They don't. It's for you. So when it comes to your career, you might sit there and think, my career has been a battle. My prosperity has been a battle. It's been overwhelming. It's been a lot. And so with the, the seven of wands, you're choosing where to stand your ground and what to stand for. And as you choose this, you claim your strength. You claim your dignity. I'm not saying that you didn't have dignity before, but it's kind of like, you know those people who absolutely positively believe in themselves and they have what it takes to back it up. Not those people who sit there and think that they're awesome and you just don't know why. You're embracing that. You're embracing the, I know my worth and you can see it too. And as you stand your ground, you're going to have people who want to knock you down. Why? Because they get their kinks stopping on a dream. That's what they do. That's who they are. That was true with Frank Sinatra. That's true you know, in that song by Frank Sinatra when he says, get your kinks stomping on a dream. And that's true today. And so here, as you stand your ground, as you say, I know my worth, and I don't have to prove it to each and every one of you, but I will defend it. You start to see that your ships go out. You start to see that your passion, your prosperity, your desires go out and you get a return on your investment. Things start coming in. And as you see this, as you say this, as you, you know, claim this, there's such a shift, there's such a change that it blows your mind. And it's almost as if you didn't think it could be like this. It's a shift that you almost thought, that well, this is for everybody else, not for me. And it's like, no, Aquarius, it's for you. It is for you. Claim it. Claim it. And it doesn't mean that it will just happen, okay? Because you, you walk away from something you once thought you would love. Because you see, recognize, and honor, that's the big thing, your difference. And as you do so, you move into card number 13. You, know, you go from 12 to 13, you progress. 
You have that dying away of the old self, a rebirth of the new. But you have a power that everybody fears, right? But that which is inevitable. And that's that. Everybody fears it, but it is inevitable. And that's what you're seeing when you shift your, your viewpoint. It is a power that is beautiful. Terrifying, yes, okay? Four horsemen in the apocalypse, everything like that, right? But that is a force for you. And you claim your worth. And you will not let anybody take it from you. Because you are the emperor. Because you are the ruler of your domain. And when it's looking to the death card, it's kind of like being Hades. A domain that only ever gains populace. Never loses it. And it's like, once you claim your power, you will only ever gain power. You will not lose it. It might change, it might shift, you might go through, you know, bad days, stuff like that. But there is, there is a force to you that is astounding. You have the repeat of the number four, take care of yourself. Take care of your body, mind, and spirit. The repeat of the number three, divinely guided. Divinely guided and divinely blessed. Your subconscious message is the queen of swords. Aquarius, this is you. You come through as a queen, meaning you don't need everybody else to see you. It's kind of like the director behind the scenes, right? You cut through doubts and fears. You know where you stand. You know what you stand for. You guard your mind. Don't share everything with everyone. They won't understand. They won't get it. Keep it to yourself. Not in a bad way, but in a, a good way, kind of like focus, I'm going to win way. Claim your passion. Claim your truth. Claim this power. And you succeed. And as you do so, right, as you set yourself free, as you, as you know your might, and you are seen because you have the emperor here, you are seen, but you know your might. And it can also be, okay, that you've protected yourself from an Aries energy or somebody who was rather tyrannical in your life that made you feel as if you always have to defend yourself. This leads you to your subconscious chakra message, which is communication, your third chakra. You're going to be picking up on all elements of communication, meaning looks, you know, facial expressions, body language, all that communication is important to you, but also kind of telepathic communi communication, things like this just instinctual atmosphere, being able to read people, communication that comes forward. And so here, by claiming your mind, knowing your power, you claim this communication, Right? And you know so much more. Everybody else is looking at surface level. You're looking deeper. You're communicating deeper. That can make things tricky. It can. Because you're seeing so much more and you're bringing so much more to the table than everybody else or than most people are. And so here, it can make communication like they're communicating here and you're communicating on such a deeper level that it's almost like you're speaking different languages. So know that with your career, with your, with your wealth, right? There is going to be that sense of feeling like you're lost in translation at times. Don't, don't sit there and think, oh, okay, I, I shouldn't be as deep as I am or I shouldn't be me. But also know that other people aren't going to be able to c communicate at the depth that you can during this time. And communication is your thing because you're an air sign. Words communication is something that really powers you. But also there is this sense of as, as you realize this about yourself, this is going to be one of your greatest, it's going to be almost like a weapon. It's like your hidden arsenal, your hidden, your, your superpower is going to be that you know so much more of what's going on than anybody thinks you do. Don't show that hand right away. No, don't. Because it's actually going to be, yeah, it's, it's your superpower. So don't, don't let everybody know that you know so much more, okay? Just know that there will be misunderstandings that come, but it, they will be worked out. And this then leads you to meditation, your subconscious, very oracle message. And it says meditation will bring you clarity of mind and a sense of inner peace. And because you are seeing things so much more deeply than everybody else, you, you need that clarity of mind that you need. You have a repeat of meditation here. So you need that meditation to center you, to ground you, and to help you move forward, right? To move you forward in clarity of mind, but also connection with your heart. All right, Aquarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe.
bye.